My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Abide in me, Jesus reminds us, to abide in him. It doesn't take much for you to look into the world and realize that very few abide in Jesus. Very few take heed to the epistle lesson for today. Brothers and sisters, let us love one another. For love is from God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Very clear. Very pointed. It is why it is so damaging in the world when Christian people fight with each other, especially in public. It is very damaging to the witness of the faith in a loving God when people of faith say and do things that are unbecoming of a Christian person, to wish harm and ill on the neighbor, to not show compassion to the one in need, to not take care of widows and orphans as the New Testament commands the church to do so. For us, God's people, it is very clear that he calls and he expects us to listen. The Old Testament lesson for today, or I should say the first lesson for today in the, in the book of Acts, reminds us very clearly that when Jesus calls us to go and profess to people, like Philip, we go. We proclaim the word of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins, salvation, and victory over the grave. We love our neighbors even when they don't love us. We show mercy even in the face of unmerciful people. It's true that Jesus gives us the greatest example of love. As he goes to the cross to save a humanity that would hate him, who goes to a cross to save his very creation, who mock him, who spit upon him, who deny him, who make everything else in this world more important than him. And yet, Jesus still says with his first words from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. You know, oftentimes in my life, both as a child of God and as a pastor, I wonder, do we really not know what we do? In fact, I think often we know exactly what we do. In fact, I think often we do things on purpose. You see, as we grow older, we find a way to cover up our feelings. We find a way to mask our feelings. You know, with a child, if you take something from a child and they want it, they're going to throw a fit. As we get older, that fit is still there. We just learn how to keep it from the eyes of others. It rages internally. Our dislike and anger for what's not being done our way boils within us. As adults or as older children, we just find a way to fake it. And the older we get, by the way, I think the better we become at faking it. At some level, maybe it would be better if we just let it out when we were upset and frustrated. Because with children, as we hear in the text for today, Jesus has proclaimed them to be the ones. Suffer ye the little ones to come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of God. At least with most children, I'll use that as a caveat, most children, they throw their fit and it's over. Some of us, you know, prolong our fits. But truly, for most children, when they don't get their way, after their fit, they move forward. And not so with the dogs. We just don't forget. Later to be used at a, at a time when it is appropriate. Later to be used at a time when it is convenient. Later to be used at a time when it suits you. Do you remember when you finished the sentence? Do you remember that time you finished the sentence? You see, for us, 
Loving our neighbors, loving our loved ones is oftentimes conditional. If I get what I want, when I want, and how I want it, then you will receive the love. And yet for Jesus, he reminds us that if you cannot love, you do not know Christ. Because Christ is love. You see, Jesus walked to Golgotha. The carrying of the cross was not symbolic of him carrying the sins of the world. It was the carrying of the sins of this world. It was not symbolic that he loved you that much because he showed you how much he loved you. He gave his last breath. You see, to love your neighbor is to be loved by Christ. To be able to love the unlovable is what Jesus does on a daily basis. To love those who hate him. To show mercy to thousands of generations of those who keep his commandments. That's the Exodus passage after the commandments were given by Moses. Show mercy and love to thousands of generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. You know, for us, it is so very clear. In the gospel lesson for today, we just hear those beautiful words, abide in me and I will abide in you. In you. If Christ abides in you, you will have no other choice but to extend the love first given to you by Jesus. You can't hold it back. You can't not share it. I was at the LWML district convention with many of our ladies on Friday night. I preached at the service. And um, they had this big buffet of goodies and fruits and stuff. And I went and sat down and one of the pastors walked by and he had a piece of cake. And I said to him, based on this text, if you love me, you will share your cake. <laughs> and so him being a good theologian, what do you think he did? He said, I don't love you. And he <laughs> ate the cake. <laughs> That's what you would do, Bob. So, I mean, sometimes you can take the comedy and enjoy the point. But sometimes the point does not become common. You see, all too often in our world today, Christian people act that way. They keep their love, which is the cake, of Jesus Christ for themselves and themselves alone. They refuse to share it with their neighbors, their children, their spouse, those they work with. Because the love of Christ is also the message of Christ. It is also the message of salvation and forgiveness. And you cannot be like my brother pastor who said, I don't love you and just eat the cake. <coughs> you got to share. And that's hard for many of us, especially good cake. It's hard to share. I mean, good cake is amongst some of the greatest things that you don't want to share, right? I mean, it's just why. But that's what love is all. Jesus has chosen to love you. And he has called you by name. He has made you his own. And now you have the opportunity to share that very love with other people. If you know Jesus, you must love. And yes, it is a law of God. Because if you cannot love, the Bible tells us you don't even know who Jesus is. That is to say, you don't even possess the cake. So you can't even tell somebody no. Because you don't even have it to give. Now think about that. If you can't even have the cake, you can't even tell somebody, no, you're not going to share it. And that's why for us, God's children, especially today as we celebrate Maisie and Violet's baptism, we know the truth that God has chosen us. We don't choose him. We don't seek Jesus as if he is lost. I mean, what happens when somebody gets reported lost? I mean, let's be honest. The police are called, a search party is gathered, and people go out and look for the lost person, only to find them, hopefully. Jesus is not lost. We don't go on a journey trying to find him, because he has found us. He has called us by name. We have confidence that we are his. So if you know Jesus, you have no other capacity but to love others. Let that be your joy. Let that be your motivation this week as you go out. You see, Jesus commanded Philip to go to the Ethiopian eunuch who did not know him. 
and he told him to tell him about Jesus. And as they were driving down the, the street, the text tells us that the Ethiopian eunuch saw water. And he asked him, why can't I be baptized now? The Bible tells us in the story today, they stopped, they got out, and he baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. And then what happened? Jesus took him away. On to another mission. On to loving someone else. On to spreading the gospel. So as you go on your way, if you know Jesus, you must love. Because Christ is love in your life.